Okay, so you may have noticed when looking at graphs of functions or relations or whatnot that some graphs have um, uh, symmetry. Uh, symmetry with respect to the x-axis, the y-axis, or the origin. So that's what uh, this little discussion is about. So real quick, let's begin with, you've got some function. Given a function f of x. If f of negative x equals f of x for all x in the domain of your function there, then the graph of f is said to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Okay, so this little f of negative x equals f of x thing up here, uh, really what that means is uh, if you take opposite x values, take an x value here and the opposite of that x value here, and you plug them both into your function, and the function values, which are the y values, are exactly the same, and you can do that for all x in the, uh, for all x's in the domain of your function, then the graph is said to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. For example, f of x equals x squared. The graph looks like this. Um, and for example, if we take opposite x values, take 1 and negative 1, they have the, this is 1, negative 1, they have the same y value. If you take 2 and negative 2, they have the same y value 4. So no matter what x value you take, if you take its opposite x value and you plug them both into your function, you get the same y value back. That's all that this little definition is talking about. Okay? So if that's the case, uh, then our graph is said to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. And really what that means is if you know a point over here on your graph and you know your graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, then you automatically know the point over here on your graph. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Uh, the next one would be symmetry with respect to the origin. So again, you have a function f. <clears throat> if f of negative x equals negative f of x for all x in the domain of your function f, then the graph is symmetric with respect to what's called the origin. All right, so this, this up here is a thing to remember. If you take opposite x values, you got an x value and take its opposite x value, you plug them into your function f and they give you back opposite y values because you've got an f here and a negative f here. So take opposite x values, spit back opposite y values, and that happens for all your x's in your domain, then your graph is said to be symmetric with respect to the origin. Take for example f of x equals x cubed. If you take 1 and negative 1, when x is 1, your y value is 1. When x is negative 1, your y value is negative 1. You get opposite x values give you opposite y values. If you take 2 and negative 2, your y values are 8 and negative 8. Opposite x values give you opposite y values. So this graph is said to be symmetric with respect to the origin. Let's look at one more. All right, so this time we have a relation instead of a function. If replacing y with a negative y in some equation results in getting the same equation back, then the graph of that relation is said to be symmetric with respect to the x-axis. Right, so for example, x equals y squared. This would be the graph of x equals y squared, because if x is, uh, if y is 1, x is 1, if y is negative 1, x is 1. So when x is 1, you get two y values, 1, negative 1. All right, so then what this thing is saying is uh, if you replace y with a negative y into your equation here and simplify that up, well, what's negative y raised to the second power? Well, negative y squared is the same thing as negative y times negative y, which is positive y squared. You get the same thing that you started with. That's what this is talking about. If you take negative y and plug it in for y and then get back the same equation that you started with, then the graph of this relation is said to be symmetric with respect to the x-axis. All right, so now, let's say we don't have a graph. Let's say we just have our function. We want to analytically determine uh, the symmetry of our particular function here. All right, so the first thing we note from those two definitions of symmetry of, of functions was we need to know what f of negative x is. So we're going to start with that. Find f of negative x. If this is f of x, then what's f of negative x? Well, that means to go and plug negative x in wherever you have an x. Your variable x will have negative x 
raised to the fourth. And yes, you do need those parentheses, don't forget. Squared minus five. All right, so you plug that in. All right. Negative x raised to the fourth power. Well, since it's an even exponent, a negative number raised to an even exponent is going to be a positive. So this just goes to x to the fourth. Same idea here. This goes to just x squared. So we have negative 2x squared and then just minus 5. And then we say, all right, that is the same thing that we started with. So f of negative x is equal to f of x. Therefore, symmetry WRT with respect to the y-axis. Because remember, if f of negative x equaled f of x, then we have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. All right. Now I'm just kind of showing you the idea, the concept uh, here of how to determine analytically the symmetry. All right. So let's look at this one. All right. So find g of negative x. And so that would give you negative x cubed minus 7 times negative x when you plug negative x in everywhere. All right. So that gives you... All right, so now you have a negative number raised to an odd exponent. That's going to be a negative number back. So that just goes to just negative x cubed without the parentheses. And then negative 7 times negative x is plus 7x. So, all right. Well, is this the same thing that you started with? No. So therefore, g is not symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So the next thing you want to determine is, is, it, is it symmetric with respect to the origin? To figure that out, down here at this line, factor out a negative 1 from everything. So you can factor it negative 1 out. That's going to leave an x cubed minus 7x. Everybody see that? We can just factor that negative 1 right out. And then that, now we see, is x cubed minus 7x. That is the same thing that we started with. That is g of x. So g of negative x, doing the math here, gives you negative g of x. And therefore, g is symmetric with respect to the origin. If you can't get um, g, of a, g of negative x to equal g of x, or can't get g of negative x to equal the opposite of your original function, if you can't get either one of those two things to happen, then it does. It, your function's not symmetric with respect to the y-axis or the origin. And that's just the way that it goes. So some functions have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. Some have symmetry with respect to the origin. Analytically, this is kind of how you can figure it out. I would not... I would not latch on to the idea of if exponents are odd, then you have symmetry with respect to the origin, and if exponents are even, then you have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. Even though it looks that way in these two examples here, I would not, um, I would not latch on to that because uh, that's not always going to be the, the case, depending on what you have here. But it's the concept of what you need to do. Plug in negative x into your function, do the math on it, and let it tell you if the, um, you're symmetric with respect to the y-axis or the origin. In other words, let the math do all the work and tell you what you have. All right, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.